Are you a wormholer that's rolled yourself out just a few too many times? Or perhaps you're new to this whole thing and are just looking for a place to start learning. Either way, welcome in. My name is Indimensional, your guide to New Eden and exploration expert, and you're in luck today because we are going to be talking about the way to roll any hole like a professional using the new fantastic patent pending Dimensional's Ultimate Rolling System, or DERS for short. And of course, if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that like, comment, subscribe. Anyways, moving on to the table of contents. So, in our video today, we're going to be talking about the overview of wormholes and what their various traits are. After that, we'll dive into some rolling fits, and then we'll go over the actual procedure, the rolling system. And then lastly, we'll conclude with a nice little example of us rolling a hole out in the wild. Alright, so let's talk about holes. To start off, there's a fantastic third-party site, like most things in EVE, called Anoix.is. So you can go ahead and check that website out, link is in the description, but a lot of our reference points and whatnot will kind of lead back to that. So definitely check it out and be familiar with it because it is a very good resource for your wormhole excursions. The first thing that we probably want to know about a wormhole is what the actual hole is. So every connection has a particular wormhole signature associated with it. That's going to be on the entry side or the static side of that wormhole. And then the opposite side has a other signature called a K162. What we are mostly interested in is that first signature. So let's take, for example, a C4 to a C5 hole. That is always going to be an H900. And that particular hole has particular stats about it. So for instance, it is a 3 billion kilogram hole um, mass size. That means that only 3 billion kilograms of masses of ship can pass through that hole before it collapses. And our goal is obviously to go over that so that it does collapse when we want it to and when we're on the right side. For simplicity, we are going to change these numbers, these 3 billion kilograms, into points. So every 100 million kilograms is going to be a point to us, also known as this is a 30 point hole. Holes do come in sizes of 1, 5, 7 and a half, 10, 20, 30, and 33. Uh, but we are generally going to be mostly interested in those 20, 30, and 33 point holes just because they are the ones that like to be rolled most often. You can certainly roll off these smaller sized holes um, with some exceptions to the very small holes because of some regenerative techniques. Um, CCP doesn't want us to roll those really small holes. Um, but we are just going to focus on those larger ones because that's typically what you want to do. And you can obviously take these techniques and adapt them to the lower holes that you. Another thing to note about the mass of the holes, and this is very, very important. This is how people get rolled out most of the time, is that every hole mass can be positive or negative 10%. So a 30 point hole can in actuality be a 27 to 33 point hole and then the last thing to know about uh, a hole for its mass size is that there is a max ship size for every size of wormhole uh, and in this case our h900 example it's going to be uh, 3.75 points and that just means that you can't put anything larger than that through it just won't allow it and 3.75 is going to be like a large rolling battleship, um, but not a like an orca or a freighter or something like that. That's going to be too large. But the second main thing to know about wormholes, aside from their size, is what stage they're at. So when you actually show info on a wormhole, it will give you a description of various things, such as its lifetime. Um, but we're not going to worry about that. What we are interested in is the stage it is. So there are three different stages of wormholes, depending on how much mass is remaining on the hole. Whenever you have a fresh hole, uh, this is gonna be 100% to 50% remaining mass. Your description will say this wormhole has not yet had its stability disrupted by ships passing through it. That means you can pretty much freely pass anything through it and you'll be 100% fine. There's no chance that this is gonna collapse on you. 
After that, we go to the 50% to 10% uh, bracket, and this is known as shrunk or stage two. And that's when it says this wormhole has had its stability reduced by ships passing through it, but not to a critical degree yet. So here you are more or less free to pass whatever you want through it. Uh, but keep in mind that for smaller sized holes, and if you are passing large pointed ships through it, there is actually technically a chance that you will uh, destroy the hole when jumping through it when it's at stage two. And then lastly, we have 10% of the hole remaining. Uh, this is when it's called critical or verge um, or stage three. And the description says that this wormhole has had its stability critically disrupted by the mass of numerous ships passing through it and is on the verge of collapse. So this is the state that you want to get it to where you have a a large ship on the other side and are ready to finish rolling it. So that's pretty much all you need to know about the wormhole uh, technicalities and specifics. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to fitting our ships so that we can roll properly. Moving on to part two, ships and their fittings. So a good rolling ship is going to be a ship that is cheap and large mass wise. So to start, you have three kind of main options. You have cruisers, battle cruisers, and battleships. Anything larger than battleship is generally too large unless you start doing dread rolling, but we're not gonna cover that currently. Uh, and anything smaller than a cruiser is typically too small to roll. So we're also not gonna worry about those. To start off with, your cruisers have about 0.1 of a point. Your battle cruisers have 0.15 and your battleships have about one point to start. However, by using mods and rigs particularly, uh, we will be able to increase these numbers to get values that are going to be conducive to how we want to roll, which we'll again cover in the part three, the systems part. As for the mods, you have first the Higgs rig anchor. This is kind of the big thing that really makes rolling a thing. So the Higgs rig doubles all of your mass on your ship. It doubles the starting mass of whatever your ship type is, and it doubles the um, mass additions of any mods that you might use on your ship. So pretty much every rolling ship is gonna have a Higgs rigs attached to it. Um, technically you don't have to have it, but it would be pretty weird if you didn't. Next up on the mods, we're gonna be talking about the armor plates. So the armor plates are a way to just add additional mass to your ship. It doesn't generally add a whole lot, but when you have a like a seven slots in your low slots, if you're like a Megatron or a Praxis, uh, and you add a bunch of them, you can actually get your masses up to uh, good values. And we'll talk about what good values are a little bit later, especially when we talk about my system in particular. But just know that every 1600 millimeter plate that you put on your battleship is gonna give you 0.6 extra points. Um, my bad, 0.06 extra points to your mass with the Higgs rig anchor attached. And then the last thing to talk about in our mod sphere is going to be your prop mods. So your prop mods are your main way to manipulate your mass uh, when you're actually flying your ship. So let's take an example of our battleship has two points on it because it's a standard one point battleship or slightly less than. We put some armor plates on it to get it up to two points. Um, and then we can put a prop mod on it. If it's a battleship size prop mod, that's going to put one extra point on it if it's hot or on, um, or it will add zero extra points if it's cold or off. So this is an example of a two to three point roller. A lot of rolling systems kind of utilize this two to three point roller system, but just know that if you put on a prop mod in a battleship, you get one or not one extra point. And then similarly with the cruisers, you will get 0.1 or not 0.1 um, extra points. Okay, now that we know what all of the modules and what and ships do for our sizes of rolling ships, let's go ahead and dive into the game and take a look at the specific fits that we will be using for the rolling system I have for you today. So first number one is the Armageddon. So we've chosen the Armageddon because it has a little over 
to start off with. And then we are going to actually increase it. Let's first turn on our Higgs rig. And this is going to put us up to 2.1 points. And then we are going to put on some armor plates, a full low rack of them. And that's going to bump us up to 2.56, or as I like to call it, 2.6. Um, and then after that, we can turn on our battleship size micro warp drive to switch between 2.6 and 3.6 points. So this is our first ship, a 2.6 to 3.6, or you could even call it a 2.5 to 3.5, if that makes you feel better. And then our next rolling ship for our fleet is going to be this mauler. So we have chosen a mauler, or it is a very heavy default ship coming in at 0.13. Um, points but we can increase this obviously we put on the Higgs rig we put on our row of six 800 um, compact tungsten plates to bring us up to 0.4 and then we use a oversized afterburner so a battleship afterburner to bring us up to 1.4 so this is a 0.4 slash 1.4 roller as our second rolling ship for our mauler and we're going to use a combination of these two ships in order to close any and all holes with expertise um, our typical fleet will consist of one armageddon and then generally two maulers because that's what i can generally field myself however you could certainly add in some two and three point uh, ships as well you could add more maulers if you want you only really need one like very large ship. Welcome back. Are you enjoying the video? Great. You've made it far enough in that you get to know the question common of the day, which is how many times on average per month do you roll yourself out of a wormhole? Or if you haven't started rolling at all, um, congratulations. You know, you just say zero because that's a real answer. Uh, and if you put your comment down below, you will be automatically entered into your chance to win a scope syndication prowler skin hot off the market for you guys right here right now anyways like comment subscribe if you like this video and let's move on to the actual procedure the dimensionals ultimate rolling system here it is let's go let's talk about it how do we do it right here so we're finally ready to talk about how the actual procedure system works. So we're gonna kinda go step by step here so that you can find a follow along. Um, it does get a little simpler in practice, but let's start out with step number one. So first you are going to check the stage of the hole. Assuming that it is a fresh hole, you can go ahead and continue on. If it is not a fresh hole, then you need to go a little bit further um, to the basically after the free points, which we'll talk about in a second. So, but if it is a fresh hole, you can go ahead and put in hot ships just willy nilly, however you want, but just make sure that you check that the hole hasn't shrunk each time you go through. Because when it does shrink, you need to know what ship shrunk it to stage two uh, and the size of that ship, particularly. After you've done that, you do a little maths on this formula. There's a chart somewhere here uh, that basically says, depending on the size of the hole, you have an amount of free points whenever you shrink it. So in our example, let's do a 30 point hole. The free points is going to be 13.5. Uh, but if we shrunk it with a uh, 1.4 sized mauler, you go ahead and do a little minus there. So that's gonna be 12.1. And then you also want to take off from the free points whatever your closing ship is. So this is gonna be your largest ship. In our case, it's gonna be the Armageddon. So you're gonna go ahead and minus an additional 3.6 there, which then brings us to 8.5. Um, so this means that we can put eight and a half points on the hole without worrying about it, that it's gonna close because it's mathematically impossible for it to close at that point. After you've done that, you are getting pretty close to the crit point. 
And this is when you want to put in your closer ship. So you want to make sure your very large ship is on the opposite side of the hole. Uh, as long as its hot value is less than 3.75 points, because then it won't be able to cross the hole at all. Um, so you want to put him over there on the opposite side. And then with your remainder of your fleet, you want to go into the hole with a ship that has a weight value that is hot plus cold equal to the minimum crit value of a hole. So again, there's the chart here. I promise you it gets easier once you do it and know it a little bit more. And you can also just use the mauler because that ship works. Uh, so for this instance, you have a mauler, which it's hot and cold value together is going to be 1.8, which is great for a 20 point hole and a 30 point hole. And since our example is a 30 point hole, that works perfect. So you can go ahead and go into the hole with the hot mauler. And then once you are inside, you check to see if it's critical. If the hole has gone critical, you go back out of the hole cold. Uh, and then you bring your closer ship and you go back out of the hole hot. And this will fully close the hole. Works every time like a charm. Uh, however, if you go in hot with your mauler and it is not critical yet, you come back out and you can come back out hot. It's totally fine. And then you just check again. Is it crit? If it's not crit, then you just go back in with another mauler and you can go in hot. That's totally fine. You check to see if it's crit. If it is, you go back out cold. If it isn't, you go back out hot and you just rinse and repeat that until you do see that critical and you can bring your closer out and it will close the hole. And that is pretty much the procedure. I know it sounds like a lot and it kind of is. Um, I did a lot of maths to kind of figure out the exact amounts that you need to fly around, uh, which you can see it with the chart. Um, but yeah, once you know that, you can always roll your holes without uh, needing a tickler and very efficiently take care of them. And it doesn't matter if they're fresh or not. And yeah, it's it's really great. So <laughs> go out there and give it a try. And let's also uh, do an example here right now so you can kind of see it in action. All righty, example time. So I just went ahead and scanned down this wormhole and we are going to warp to it. I've okay. never been to this wormhole before. I'm not sure how fresh it is, um, but we are going to just obliterate it. And we are using three characters here. We have an Armageddon and two Maulers. Uh, don't worry about that pacifier. He is just unrelated. So the first thing that we are going to do is see what kind of hole it is and then see what its stage is. So here we see it leads to a C3. Let's go ahead and also bookmark it. Uh, we can say dot three MZZ. Uh, and we want to check to see it is beginning to oh, uh, has not yet had its stability significantly disrupted by ships passing through it. So it is a stage one hole, which means we can go ahead and put stuff through and we're going to put stuff through hot. And because we warped to the uh, signature and not the actual bookmark, we are a little bit far away from it. Let's just get over to it. Got to be within 5,000 meters of a hole to jump through. So we're going to go jump with this first guy. We're just going to confirm that the hole is not significantly disrupted or has not changed. Uh, and then we can jump the next person through. And the hotkey for show info is by default T. So if you actually hold down the T key and click on the wormhole, you can see uh, its information a little bit quicker. So it looks like we're good there. And go ahead and enter it again. And then on the other side, we can just check it. You can see that it's not had its stability uh, reduced at all. Neat, neat. Uh, and then we can go ahead and warp 
to some celestial. And we also want to make a bookmark on the hole first. And then we are also going to make a uh, ping on this hole, hopefully. Which will just be a nice little warp off and on point to speed things up if we spawn too far away from the hole. Whenever you spawn out of a wormhole, you have a chance to spawn pretty close to it or up to like 15 kilometers away. So we make that bookmark there, that ping. And we just gotta make sure that it's uh, at least 150 kilometers away from the wormhole so that we will be able to warp to it directly once we get in there. Other than that, warping to a celestial isn't too bad. It's just a little bit more extra time consuming. We're gonna wait for our Armageddon to arrive on grid here so that we can all warp back together. All right, let's go ahead and warp squad. Warp drive, warp drive, active. And then I also do keep in my cargo hold extra mobile depots and Higgs rank, Higgs anchors, just in case something does go wrong and I need to rip off a Higgs rig um, to hopefully get my ships back <laughs> into the hole. Um, it's only user error that causes that problem, but it's good to be prepared all the time. And we can see our little ping here. It looks like it is on grid and it is a thousand kilometers away, so perfectly made if I do say so myself. We're going to go ahead and go out the hole hot with our first character here. We're going to switch to our second character, see the hole, see that it has uh, not shrunk. So we're going to go ahead and pass our closer through. And we're going to check the hole. Oh, and there you can hear it, you can see it, and you can also look. And then you see that it has had its stability reduced by ships passing through it, but not to a critical degree yet. And that was with our large ship. So. Because this is a 20 point hole, we can see here on a Noix, it's the C247. It appears in C4s and goes to C3s. 20 point hole. We can then look at our free points on this chart here. Uh, for a 20 point hole, it's nine. So we're gonna do nine minus 3.6 minus another 3.6. Uh, and so that's going to be 3, 6, uh, 7.2, um, 8, so 1.8 is our free points here. So that means we are actually just going to put this last guy through hot. That's going to take off another 1.4. We've pretty much exhausted our free points at this point. We can see our polarization timer here. We just need to wait 20 more seconds um, and we can go ahead and just approach the hole with everyone. So now what we're gonna do, we're on to the put the closer in and then um, pass the maulers through until it crits part of the um, rolling process. Here you see we have a pretty far distance away, but we are a little polarized, so we can probably just move our ship towards it. Mm, we're a little bit slow here. Warping off would probably have been a good plan, but we're committed at this point. Another thing you can do is that if you don't want to put your, like if you want a few extra points on your free points, you can put your closer in cold. But in this case, we're going to just put them back in hot to, to suck up the rest of those free points and put them on the right side. And we are ready to jump the hole on our big closer Armageddon. All right, he's there. We can go ahead and warp him to the ping. We can check this hole. Uh, it is not crit yet. So we're going to put a mauler through hot. And we're going to check it. It's not crit. 
We're gonna go ahead and ping him off. Warp drive active. And while we're over here, we can go ahead and cloak up our Armageddon just as he waits for his turn to fully close the hole. All right, and because it's not crit again, we are going to just go through hot. And something to notice about all holes is that polarization timer. It is a one-way street. Whenever you go through one side of a hole, it is, um, you get polarized for five minutes. So it looks like it's not crit yet. So we are gonna go ahead and take our second mauler. We're gonna put it in hot. We've got 40 seconds on that one, and it looks like it is crit here. So let's go ahead and warp it to the ping, and then we can warp it back, and the polarization timer should be done by then. And we are just finishing up this hole here. We're going to put this smaller through cold, because again, it's impossible for it to collapse um, when it is 1.4 and 0.4. Uh, and then we were going to finish it up with the... Armageddon and that covers the whole range of the if it was the smallest size hole or if it was the largest size hole and something with your large uh, ship I don't know if I actually mentioned it but it is very important is that your large ship when it goes through hot needs to be larger than the maximum uh, critical size of that hole so for a 20 point hole that's gonna be 2.2 points uh, not very hard to do for a 30 point hole it's going to be 3.3 and then for a 33 point hole it's going to be 36.3 uh, which is when you're doing a 33 point hole there is a small possibility with this armageddon that you don't close it if things go terribly wrong um, but that will basically never happen so i just don't worry about it all right so we're going to go through a cold with this mauler and then we're going to go through hot with this arm again. And then the hole will be closed. Minimal math involved. All you really need to do is the free points. And if you don't really want to do the free points, you don't have to. And then we just check it out as it shuts. There we go. That's how you professionally roll holes. It's been an honor and a privilege to have you guys watch this video in its entirety hopefully if you've made it this far thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time ciao for now and go roll some holes